Memetics is the study of memes, a term coined by Professor Richard Dawkins to describe how ideas perpetuate themselves through culture. They do this in a similar way to how genes replicate. They mutate and evolve and survive. Unfortunately, mainly for the professor, memes have morphed into an online phenomenon of mostly humor and online references, captioned photos, mostly cats. <laughs> you have Neon Cat, you have Grumpy Cat, you have I Can Has Cheeseburgers. I don't think Professor Dawkins thought that his idea would turn into the derp face or uh, Ermagerd language. But there is one meme that stands above the rest. It has grown beyond mere internet fandom humor into something truly extraordinary. It is the connection between British actor Benedict Cumberbatch and the semi-aquatic carnivorous mammal known as the otter. <laughs> A mixture of laugh and silence is the first reaction <laughs> when first introduced to this amazing idea. But it's clear <laughs> there is a deep cosmic connection between Benedict Cumberbatch and the otter. There's plenty of photographic evidence of this phenomenon. I know. It continues to mount. Something is going on. The archive of evidence of this connection continues to grow <laughs> and mount. It's obvious something deeply mysterious about the universe is going on. It's clear there's a connection between these two creatures, one famous for its dark, luscious coat of dark hair, and of course the otter. Skeptics may toss aside this evidence as mere coincidence or cherry-picking, but in 2013, Mr. Cumberbatch took the role of Julian Assange in the film The Fifth Estate, and the connection became completely clear. <laughs> Undeniable. Later, it was found that there is an aquarium where you can pet otters. And, of course, soon after... <laughs> yes, that is a glass confines for Benedict Cumberbatch playing Khan in the Star Trek reboot. This is undeniable, people. There is a deep cosmic connection between Benedict Cumberbatch and these creatures known as the otter. Now let's talk about ideas not worth spreading. <laughs> extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And you knew that the talk that I just gave you was ridiculous. You were not buying into it. You had a sense that the evidence was not extraordinary enough for the claim. But believe it or not, there are plenty of ideas that people do believe that are as ridiculous as the connection between semi-aquatic mammals and British actors. <laughs> the problem is that even though they are ridiculous, some ideas are dangerous. It leads to parents not inoculating their children from completely preventable diseases. One doctor, now discredited, said there was a link between autism and the MMR vaccine, 
That paper was retracted, his credentials are basically taken away, and yet people still believe that there should be some sort of fear between vaccines and autism or other, uh, other concerns over safety, despite all the evidence to show how safe and life-saving vaccines truly are. It also leads to people believing in all kinds of pseudoscience that markets itself as credible science. Things that affect individuals negatively, like Scientology, and things that affect us all negatively, like global warming deniers, who spread myths about uh, climate change, and this has a real impact on literally the globe, because global warming is a scientific fact. It also, one of the most dangerous ideas that are spreading are ones about treatments and therapies that are either disproven or unproven. It leads to people taking homeopathy instead of real medicine. It leads to people turning to psychics and faith healers um, where medicine uh, has been proven people go to alternative medicine and are often uh, led away from treatments um, that are proven to help. A common thing to remember is that there is no alternative medicine. Medicine that has been proven to work is just called medicine. That's all you need. Um, but m memes have shown us that ideas spread not based on whether they're good or bad, not whether they're high quality or low quality, but on how well they are at replicating themselves. This is important because it means that a bad idea can spread effectively just as easily as a good idea. And more concerning, a good idea can be bad at replicating itself, can have difficulties spreading easily. And this is very important um, for TED, which motto is ideas worth spreading. But how do we, without the help of the amazing curators at TED, in our own lives figure out which ideas are worth spreading and which aren't? We want to know what is true versus what we simply want to be true. And the tool for that is scientific skepticism. Skepticism is using science in our everyday lives. You don't need a lab coat. You don't need to set up an experiment. You just need to know the tools of critical thinking. You need to understand why you can't pick a Benedict Cumberbatch and an otter and put them together and say there's a connection. You have to remember that there's all the pictures of otters and Cumberbatches that don't look alike. This is a cognitive error that we make all the time. We count the hits and not the misses. We go outside after a busy day at work and we see that there's a full moon and we think, oh, Every time the full moon's out, all kinds of crazy stuff happens. What we don't remember, what our brains fail to pick up, is when that same busy night happens, we don't look up and say, oh, wow, it's the darn waning crescent again. Every time. <laughs> These tools can be taught to everyone. Science can be used to think critically in our everyday lives, and it's important that we do so. It's important because we live in a world that is now highly dependent on science and technology, and it's irresponsible of us to base our decisions, our voting, our everyday claims based on ideology and not the facts. My job as an artist um, is to take people into 
worlds, uh, use characters, and give people examples of critical thinkers, of situations where characters think themselves out of a problem, showing the bad guys where they go wrong when they're using ideology, falling into cognitive errors, showing the danger of doing so, showing the danger of not being scientifically literate. I find that storytelling is similar to dreaming. Our minds at night take us through scenarios without the risks of going through them in real life. They take us through, what would we do if we lost our keys? What would we do if we can't find a washroom or find ourselves suddenly falling? It's kind of like a test run for our daily lives where uh, the real stakes are on the line. Stories, I think, are appealing in a similar way where we can be Hand, have our hands, uh, you know, taken down the path of a character and see how they live their life and go through their problems um, without the risk of actually having experienced it ourselves. This, I think, is a really powerful tool when it comes to spreading good ideas. We take scientific skepticism, science-based and evidence-based thinking to evaluate claims and ideas. But how do these ideas get out to the public? My job as an artist is to take the ideas of science-based thinking and get people to connect to them emotionally through stories and through lovable characters. I think there's a responsibility for artists filmmakers, musicians, authors, who create pop culture, that we now start making pop culture that has these ideas of science-based thinking woven into the fabric of their messages. One of my favorite examples is the series Harry Potter, which, um, as we may all know, especially if you have young children um, or 20-year-olds lying around still at the house to read Harry Potter. And it's a fantasy series. It has witches and wizards and magic, and yet the messages are of three individuals who question authority, who are skeptical within their own fantasy world, who value knowledge, who value skepticism, yet it's packaged in this palatable um, fantasy world that is highly entertaining. We can, use, uh, we can use entertainment that takes us into different worlds, even fantasy worlds, even ones with magic, and still weave messages of critical thinking throughout them. I think uh, of a bad example is the film Avatar, where a highly technological future Earth wages war on the nature-loving uh, alien world. And I find that despite being a science fiction story, is really a message of anti-technology and anti-science. When we live in a world that we cannot be uh, romanticizing nature, we, we have to love nature from a scientific understanding of nature. We can't fear technology. We need to understand technology. And I find that art is sort of the sugar that can make the sometimes bitter taste of reality go down. We can take what science teaches us about the world around us and wrap it in a bow of art and make people want to spread these ideas. Make the ideas worth spreading easy 
to perpetuate themselves. I think this is an idea worth spreading in itself, sort of the prime idea worth spreading is thou shalt spread ideas <laughs> that are true, not simply appealing to our desires. We must take claims and evaluate them with science and critical thinking, not with ideology. Thank you. <laughs>